Hello, fellow crafty one. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for for even hopping by and allowing us to operate this for you. In today's uh, episode, we're going to go back in 2019. I will translate something in French to English for you because I want to give you value because I know you're not an idiot. You can read them yourself. Now, for those who are from Ontario, I'm sure you're going to appreciate the service. We'll go backwards in 2019. I wanted to do this because this one will talk about the leadership. Why this is important? Why you want me? Why I want you to hear about the leadership? Because you're frankly wondering, okay, who wants Del Balzo killed? Don't just give me Leonardo Rizzuto. Tell me who's behind the plot. Who could it be? Who are the, all these people? He went to meet someone, didn't he? Right? One of our beautiful crafty ones. I forget. And so many of them. I think his my name is Ting. I think he was him. He told me. He said he went to meet the Hell's Angels in front of the gym. Well, who are those Hell's Angels? Well, obviously, that Hell's Angel himself didn't do it. They use a cuckold system. So now you can expect YouTube to also shadow ban this video. That's how it works, guys. I take the bullets and the hits. But I don't make these terms up. You even heard the Bonanno crime family, Don, use them. And his son to explain what was going on. So in this system, they will send someone to go meet Del Balzo probably. And then they were, then Del Balzo would got killed. So who are these people who are sending these people, right? Here we go, my friend. 2019, it's going to be oddly eerie. Very eerie. You'll know why. I'll guide you through it. So first off, a cursory analysis of this picture. Hell yeah, it's the leadership. And I want you to just... Pay attention to this man right here in his suit. It looks very elegant. And this man right here is Kazeta in his suit, right? And I want you to remember, just for, for knowledge, remember when I say Kanawaki, I talk about a reserve. You know, I talked about Kazeta, biker. Now on the article, he's going to mention another reserve, okay? And this time, when we mention this other reserve, we're not pointing to him. He's going to be pointing to Martin Robert. And Martin Robert... A very interesting fellow. Very, very interesting fellow. He had a wedding a couple of years back. If you want, you go check our videos on Hell's Angels Weddings. Okay? It's on. The, you'll see his picture right on. Uh, not him. You will see it on the thumbnail. It's the other dude. I wish he was here so I could point him out to you. But they're like two, two sides of the same coin. Both Death Riders. Both uh, well-deservingly Hell's Angels. They were not gifted anything. You know, this was not... Uh, uh, he's a French Canadian, like we're just promoting him. It doesn't work. It didn't work like that. He absolutely re uh, deserves it, you know, in, in a fucked up way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because they're Hell's Angels. They had to commit tons of crimes, etc. You didn't get here by, uh, like, a president of Mexico, hugs and bullets. You know what I mean? You didn't get there like that. But my friend here, uh, Martin Robert, he's part of the leadership of the Hell's Angels currently. So this was in 2019. Of course, Del Balzo, if the hit was contracted by the Mafia for the, by the Hells Angels from the Mafia, of course Martin Robert's gonna know. Of course he will. Plus, they had business together, these guys, with Chit Del Balzo. Well, at a certain point, I'm guessing things soured, as you know, between Leonardo Rizzuto and Del Balzo. So, they have to make a choice. Hmm, do I go with Chit or do I go with the Rizzuto family? You can probably bet your bottom dollar he may have picked this guy right here. That's Leonardo Rizzuto. I know it's hard to tell. It was an arrest. His head's covered. It's the exact same operation, okay, than this one below. Gregory Woolley. Okay? Let's go now. So. Même s'il ne porte plus officiellement les couleurs des Hells Angels, even if he doesn't officially wear the colors anymore. Oh, 2019. Mario Brouillette. This is Mario Brouillette right here. Do you see him? Mario Brouillette serait l'acteur le plus influent. He would be the most influential actor in Montreal, according to the SQ. He who considers him, SQ's RCMP, by the way, who considers him being linked very tightly with the bikers still. So in 2008, Mario Brouillette, um, 47 years old at that time. Remember, this article is written in 2019, okay? Always remember that because I'm doing a verbatim for you, okay? And he says that he was he was condemned to five years in the penitentiary for trafficking cocaine. Avant de recevoir une autre peine, before receiving another one, another sentence for shark, you see, in 2009. So, 
according to our sources, il a pris soin. He took care, note this, of godfather Niccolo Rizzuto while the patriarch was detained. So imagine a 70 or 80 year old man, you know, going inside of a penitentiary with a bunch of savages. How the hell does he come out alive? Well, when you got that much money and you got that much respect and you got that much People need your 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 network. They need you to bring those or to import those uh, coke, like that coke in. They need your Italian network. Sorry, I used the term Italian. My apologies, guys. I hate doing that, but at the same time, I think it's pretty cool to describe the people, you know. But I, Italians are innocent. Like 99.99% of them are absolutely innocent, guys. You know what I mean? So please don't take it the wrong way when I say Italians. But he says, Suive les Hells Angels, Stefan Proof, Salvatore Cazetta, qui arbitre des conflits. So here you go, man. It's telling you that Stefan Proof, that's the other Hells Angels I mentioned to you earlier. I said the, 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 the double side of the coin. Salvatore Cazetta, that's the rock machine, ex rock machine founder, who joined the Hells Angels when he absolutely had no choice, I guess. You could say that. And then he says, these two were at the time, 2019, they were sort of arbitrating the conflicts. Mais qui à 64 ans aurait com commencé à parler de retraite? But who at 64 years old would have began talking about retirement? And none other than Salvatore Brunetti. Those who watched, who watched the uh, saga of the 1% or uh, the saga of the 1%, uh, the, one of the latest episodes, I think it was the last one, right? Or it was the Hells Angels or International Hells Angels. I cannot remember which one. I think it was, yeah, it was Sag of the 1%. The very last episode, guys, that's the one. We saw Salvatore Brunetti. Those who don't know, a huge character, huge character. You cannot tell the history of Quebec underworld in the last 30 years, 40 years without mentioning him. In fact, he's even more OG than that, if you will, because he was part of the uh, Devil's Disciples Back then, so when I talk Devil's Disciples, now we're talking way before, before the uh, Biker War. So, l'ami de tous, Giuseppe Foracazzo, Focarazzo, sorry, 44 years old, Ilias, Gator. So that's, they're listing the leaders now, okay guys? So, inside of this list that we're going to read, it's the, you're going to have to detect the enemies, the possible guys who said, yeah, get we need to take Del Balzo out. It's in there. So, Giuseppe Focarazzo, 44 years old, alias Gator, en raison de son tatouage en forme d'alligator. So, in reason that he has an alligator tattoo, was notably implied in the financing and recycling of monies. According to the police, il serait nou le nouvel homme fort. So, at the time, the new strong man in Laval. Okay? And he, put, and he owns a cafe. A... A few doors next to Rome Cafe, and it says which is the headquarters of the Sicilians, the gen the clan of the Sicilian clans. Now, people will say, I don't trust these uh, newspaper guys. Dude, they are so on point. Three years later, or four years later, we have Leonardo Rizzuto leaving that Rome Cafe, and He's being followed from there. His enemies knew where he was going, and he was meeting someone there, and they followed him from there. It was that easy. So uh, you can trust these uh, the, our journalists here in Quebec. They do a good job. And in fact, it's always the same ones that are reporting. Félix Seguin, Daniel Renault, and Eric Thibault, and, uh, and maybe one or two others at the most. Then you get Mariana Murani, and then you have uh, you have our, our favorite. My favorite is, uh, is Nicasso. Il fréquenterait ces derniers autant que des motards et des membres de gang. So, qui le respectent également. So, he would also be meeting the bikers and members of, note that, street gangs. Qui le respectent également. Les manchettes de ces derniers mois, what went in the news, what was like catching fire in the news, was that apparently, this is a funny one, he had won a lottery ticket, Loto Québec. So this multimillionaire, probably criminal, had won the lottery. And then he got it robbed in the United States. And the people in the, in the mafia community were talking about it. It was like a rumor or it was going through the grapevines. One has to ask, did one of his enemies set him up? Maybe we're, we're, we're stretching here. Les Siciliens et, les, et leurs alliés. The Sicilians and their allies. 
interesting. So, Giuseppe Foracaso was not listed there. Remember that. Les Siciliens et leurs alliés. De père en fils, of course. Le clan Sicilien est composed, is composed of third and second generation of families. Note the entrenchment, guys. Third and second generation. So in the US, you have John Gotti, and then you have his son. I forget his name. Uh, is, is it Junior John Gotti Jr.? You know what I'm talking about. The the big, the big, uh, the, the fat, fatter, the fatter guy. You know what I mean, the kid. That would be second generation. Well, in Canada, we're talking about third generation, and he's right. Leonardo Rizzuto. He's the grandson of Niccolo Rizzuto. And we have them named Vito Salvaggio, Leonardo Rizzuto, Nicola Spagnolo, Liborio Contrera, and Stefano Solicito. Serait toujours associé au clan. They would still be associated to the clan. And when you do look at this list, on top of my head, yes. Yes, it had, has any of these went rogue. And uh, Rizzuto had to put a hit on their, on their head. And he died in, uh, like Del Balzo, like, like uh, Salvatore Scopa, Andrew Scopa. Do you see any of that in, around in these names? Has that proven true? Toutefois, alors qu'en novembre, in 2015, however, it says, Stefano Solicito and Leonardo Rizzuto were considered like the leaders, the, inter, uh, the intermediary leaders of the mafia by the police. But it says, it says at this time, however, the cops do not give them this sticker anymore. Well, they were wrong. Le clan des Siciliens continuerait toujours de diriger l'une des branches les plus importantes des paris sportifs. So it says the Sicilian clan does control one branch of the important gambling business in the region of Montreal. Ses membres sont fréquemment interpellés par la police dans les bars et les restaurants. So he said these members are always or frequently uh, being stopped, first checked by the police in bars and restaurants in Montreal. Now, the glaive. We have Gregory Woolley. Et coule les dernières années d'une peine de 8 ans. So he had finished 8 year sentence. We live in Canada. How much of that did he really do? Imposed after his arrest in Operation Mago Mastiff. Operation Mago Mastiff, he was arrested 2015. You know that one. And I showed you a picture up on top. That was the actual arrest. After this date, il était vu par la police. He was seen by the police with the heads of Hells Angels, Mafia gangs. Yes, we saw pictures of him. Uh, police were surveilling him, taking screenshots, and he was seen with every single one of them, uh, individually, that is. They never meet all three right there out in the street. I haven't, I've yet to see a picture like that. However, actually, I might have seen it. I might have seen one. Maybe one. I saw him with, Sal with Salvatore Cosetta. That comes to my head. But I don't remember uh, a mafioso being there, actually. But anyways, in regardless of his detention, Wooly Kikont, who is among the strong arm in the field. You notice what he says? He's on the terrain, on, on, on the field. That means that he's the hands and feet. They use him. And he has his own baby cucks. And that's who he's going to use. Young, impressionable men. Like, I forgot the, uh, that, that kid's name, 23 years old, and he's gonna, gonna t give them maybe 3,000 bucks and he's gonna go tell them to shoot someone. I highly doubt they're paying these guys $200,000, $250,000. I really doubt it, guys. My opinion. And encore considéré par nos sources comme un acteur influent du crime organisé. And, the, and one reason that I, I always thought this, and I sort of kind of got my confirmation, sort of one of our crafty ones confirmed it. He said, in jail, there seemed to have been a, a feud at a certain point between the Blues and the Reds, of course. And uh, the Hells Angels tried to squash it. It's bad for business. And they gave them 500 k that split it between you guys, man. How about that? Just so you guys stop fighting. The Blues, they, the leaders, they said fuck all the people at the bottom. They kept it. The Reds, they split it among themselves. Take it for what it's worth, man. Il serait toujours proche de certains individus liés. But, you know, when you, when you raise and you follow supremacy, you know what I always tell you guys? If you're surrounded by, by jerks, it trickles down on you. Then you have no kindness left in you and you're going to treat other people like jerks. Sort of like in Quebec, the drivers. Did you know, notice when you come here, there's like a bunch of savages. 
it, it, I'm telling you, it's, if you live here long enough, eventually it might turn you into one as a driver. So take take that for what it's worth. That's my theory on this. If uh, if you're a bunch of, surrounded by supremacists and you try to uh, gaslight yourself and you try to convince yourself it's not, and you know, and you're not being a cuck, eventually it might might hit you a little bit and you might start treating your own people the same way you know it's weird how that works and also i have a video one of my most important videos is called stockholm syndrome give it a chance youtube does not want you to watch it and just for that you should le contremaître surnommé le patron de la rue so here's a good one my friends the le, let's say this is the street boss who i i mentioned to you before davide barberio surnommé le patron de la rue they are, actually it's first sentence nicknamed the street boss by specialists in the war against organized crime in quebec okay davide barberio serait celui qui règne les problèmes qui règle he solves problems on the streets and he would have contributed to maintaining peace between the clans barberio alias baldi a été accusé dans la foulée de l'enquête clemenza so he was one of the accused in the operation clemenza and he benefited in arrest stop procedures again another term i call this canada laws you know canada laws it quebec's not guilty it's canada because it's entirely all over the place like this they bring the, these, these guys to uh, to court they have all this evidence and everything and then uh, basically because we're such a bureaucratic place no one wants to really get anything moving eventually you get stuck and then you just need to cross the fish finishing line they say oh look too many times too long has passed these people have been suffering you know for the good of humanity let's release them to the world and that's what happened so he was released like all of them and, and, I'm, and i'm telling you this happened once this happened on a large scale for the entire hell's angels arrests at a certain point i forgot which operation was it shark you see guys i cannot remember some guy will enlighten me there's just too many too many facts for me to remember now baldi was accused we got that part he said he would have been close to marco pizzi accused comme lui à l'issue de l'enquête clemenza the source croit sources believe that barbario was equally equally has contact with mirachi there you go that's the guy remember him earlier i couldn't remember his name where's mirachi this man i the story of this man is epic absolutely epic one day we'll talk about that guy i find it fascinating personally personally i find desjardins story with di malo and and the mirachi is absolutely fascinating completely fascinating les rescapés en 2016 marco pizzi escaped a spectacular attempt on his life two men in a truck uh in their took him in their wait a second oh with with a mitraillette with machine guns wanted to cat, capture him basically before they changed their mind because there were kids nearby à la même époque at the same time certain uh, certain of his properties and vehicles were guess what burning so one other one rule that i wanted to mention guys whenever you see cars burning uh, you know this is a regular occurrence sh- stuff burning basically there's generally two reasons that i know of extortion victim you remember we heard this from one, one of the mafioso's own words i think it was a salvatore scopa recently we heard him say it they burn cars and thing like this they don't want the guy to die because or else they would have just shot him no so you have to think about it like that if they didn't shoot him they were burning cars it's a warning it's intimidation whatever usually there's two cases extortion there's an extortion victim someone who went to their gambling homes or stuff like this and uh, they want to pressure him to pay those exorbitant uh, interest rates that, that they're not coming up with the payments on the weekly basis or whatever they agreed to uh, probably weekly then we have if it's not extortion it's probably one of their enemies one of someone inside that they want to intimidate to get out of the business to convince him to to lay low or stuff like this mais aujourd'hui les choses semblent être calmes pour PZ it says but today things seem to be calm for PZ according to our sources he has a certain influence in rivière des prairies et serait également uh, étroitement sorry about that he would be also linked to other Sicilians okay 
let's check this one the ghost condemned for having plotted the aspiring godfather's death salvatore the iron worker montagna in 2011 vittorio miracci alias victor prodigy of renal de jardin is doing his business discreetly since his leaving of prison almost two years ago so 2017 is when he left apparently quote he's a ghost says a police officer mirarchi is very suspicious in the weeks that followed his liberation he did not even possess a cell phone vittorio mirarchi 41 is listened is a sorry about that is forgive me he's surrounded by a very close and loyal uh close and loyal uh, in the middle of a peach i forgot that word uh, let's say a core let's call it a core middle he has a, he's follow he's surrounded he's surrounded by a core of people of which the loyalty is without fail then he tells you the recent weddings of two very close have of his uh, uh de ses proches, so two people who are close to him showed that it would be very difficult to destroy this core of families in the organization and we saw this is the way it's done by the best of them like the Rizuros. they like apparently as we heard in uh, the salvatore scopa state himself he married his cousin okay so take it for what it's worth i'm not here to criticize nobody's uh, decision to marry their cousin or stuff like this you know in culture i don't know you know it goes over my head durant l'enquête clemenza but i guess they do this not i guess they are doing this so that you will never it's your cousin how are you gonna backstab your uncle your nephew you're not gonna do that you want the best for them that's where usually people usually people draw the line usually as you know michael franzese's son uh not michael franzese brother snitched Don, uh, the Don Francis, and he put him in jail because he was a uh, he was addicted to so many drugs, and he betrayed his own own father. So doesn't always help. Doesn't always help. Now, uh, let's just check. He says it in the investigation Clemenza, which the RCMP attacked in 2011, the emergent clans of the mafia. The investigators had gone proof that the clan was implicated in the importation of cocaine in a grand scale. Mais Mirarchi n'a jamais été accusé, but Mirarchi wasn't accused, but it was his team, in other words. And according to our information, the clan controlled a part of the betting business, illegal betting business in Montreal. Le groupe serait pour le moment assez indépendant. The group would be for the moment independent enough of other clans and bikers but would have the solid approval of families in Ontario. Do you see where we're going here, guys? You see what I'm saying? The elements in Ontario, the elements in Ontario are definitely linked with the elements in Buffalo. And if we think about marriages and things like that, you see where I'm going there. There are probably family links and things like that. So if you wipe out someone, in Montreal, you probably indirectly wiped out a family member of someone who was related. Even if they don't necessarily have the exact same family name. Because people get married, they change names, right? And they have sons, etc. The thing is convoluted. Let's keep going. So that's why I said you can never underestimate the Ontario factor, which also goes up to Buffalo. Lening. The Enigma. Renal Desjardins. For the past couple of years, he was imprisoned for having, of course, tried to kill Salvatore Montagna in 2011. So, and not tried to kill, having killed, forgive me. And then he says that... Uh, the police believed that the star and influence of the, of the Godfather have diminished since his arrest. But in the past... Desjardins had strong strong backers notably influential members of the Hells Angels of Trois-Rivières in fact yes his son I don't remember what type of business 
There's too many facts to remember, guys. I'm I'm old. Desjardins, um, his son had business with with a Hell's Angels. They bought properties together or a business together. I can guarantee you this. This is a fact. I just don't know which one it was. Was it real estate? Was it a business? I cannot remember for the life of me. So uh, I'm, I bet you his son's not doing that out of his own uh, volition, sort of. You know, it's like his dad probably has a say in that. You know, his, your son doesn't just go and do business with the uh, Trois Rivières chapter, you know, without going to see Papa. That's a, that I'm sure of. That would be, or that would be incredibly dumb. You want to consult with, you have the Godfather with you. Of course you want to go ask him for the advice when you go deal with the devils. But he says that when he left, or when he was about to come out, he was going to be 67. Once again, Article 2019, we're reading it word for word. Sorti de l'ombre, coming out of the shadows, établi dans le nord de Montréal depuis plusieurs années, le clan Lopez Oliverio, come established in the north of Montreal for a couple of years. The clan named Lopez Oliverio, this could just be the government giving them this name. Usually they give the name of the leadership. If there's more than one person, they, they join them like this. So it's probably Lopez and Oliverio, probably. Don't quote me on this. It could also be one single person that has this family name. I doubt it. So, a toujours amené des affaires discrètement avant que le projecteur... Uh, uh, sorry about that. Uh, always brought his business discreetly in front of... It says the projectors. I don't know what he means. Avant que les projecteurs des enquêtes de l'ASQ soient braqués sur lui. Okay, okay, it's an expression. Basically, before the SQ where his attention was garnered on him or focused on him in the investigation Mago Martif, Mago Mastif. now we have Precisions which was between 2013 and 2015 I remind you this was a big operation it lit it, it screwed up Gregory Woolley bad you know very bad and uh, Trois Rivières Franco Giuseppe Pascal Lopez sont accused d'avoir they were accused of having furnished cocaine the old organization of Patrick Corbeil. I don't know who that is, or I can't remember. Alors que celle-ci était en rupture de stock, while this one ran out of cocaine, in other words. While they were running low in cocaine, these guys helped to, to resupply. À moins de virements spectaculaires, ils devraient subir leur... <laughs> this is a good one. You see what, <laughs> see what they did here? It says, unless... There's a spectacular, a, a spectacular turnaround in the courts. They should, they should be present for the process, for the process of a, of a, of a trafficking cocaine. So they should appear in court at that time. I wonder if that actually happened. Plus de quatre ans après leur arrestation, after good lord, en 2018. So they waited four years. They still didn't go to court. Good Lord. Canada. Thank you. En 2018. Now you know why I call it Canada. It's because, duh, this was bound to happen. It's bound to happen again. Mark my words. En 2018, un immeuble qui abrite une entreprise appartenant à la famille de, dans le nord de Montréal, a pris feu. So in 2019, there was a building that, that had that housed a business that belonged to a mafia family, I'm assuming, in the north of Montreal. That, that there you go, that caught fire. When, when, they, when the fire was declared by one of the servers, okay, no, actually said one of the crypto, interesting, says that, so this is maybe not a mafia family, just a normal family, I'm assuming, a family that they, that they were mining cryptocurrency in the basement, and that, Magically caught fire. Does anyone graphics cards ca catch fire, guys? You know, anyone's graphics cards actually spontaneously combust? I don't know. You guys tell me. You guys are pros with computers. Some of you will be able to tell me that. All I know is I tried to build my own, B own PC and they told me don't buy a used graphics card because maybe it was mine, you know? But I don't know. Was it, is it possible for just spontaneous combust or do you guys think that... It has something to do with this. Le mouton noir. Selon, d'après nos sources, here you go, he says, the black sheep. According to our sources, Andrew Scopa 
was put à l'index. So I guess he was pointed at by the rest of the mafia. Il serait le seul. He would be the only one that's isolated since he, look at this, he benefited of a stop of procedures in one of his one of his arrests, I'm guessing, one of his, uh, in one of the investigations, and we know how bad they had him. We know all this. They had cameras inside. They were following him night and day. They listened to his conversations. They had Felix Seguin go in. If you haven't seen, there's a seven-part video where we translate everything word for word for you. It took me a whopping 40 hours to do that, guys. Check it out if you want to enjoy yourself and if you want to help our channel. Or you can join that other sucker. You know who he is. And you should click unsubscribe. But I don't know why he's still here. If you don't like me, you don't like my jokes, you can go and watch somebody else, buddy. You know, like a big boy. Like a big kid. Et en 2018, le meurtre spectaculaire de son frère Salvatore. We know his brother died. This one's really sad. He was having a... I think it was a communion for his son, uh, uh, apparently. And inside of a hotel, he had guests, he had children, people were there. And with what we do know is that this is how Gregory, disgusting of a human being he is. He couldn't wait. He sent Silva, by the way. Silva had already committed, what, maybe fucking four to eight murders already? That's the guy you sent to commit another one there. If I'm going to give you guys a recommendation, you know, what you should do is you shouldn't send someone to a, that has an eighth or ninth murder to do your, your, your bidding. Maybe you should get a fresh guy, you know, because when that guy gets caught, he has 10 over his neck. He's going to snitch you all, which is basically what happened. And that fool is such a, sorry to tell you, he's such a pussy. He went to a birthday party or to a bar in the West, in, in the West Side with a gun. If you're that scared of going to a party, dude. Did you need a gun? Maybe you shouldn't go to the party. Maybe you should throw your hands. So the guy went there, and someone maybe gave him the, a, a wrong look, and he felt like a big boy because he had his gun on, you know? And the idiot shot him, and that's what put this whole thing down for them, you know? Just putting out there for those who don't know, we didn't speak about that yet. I was actually reserving that for an episode because it's worth talking about in itself, that saga. Now, let's keep going. Um... Uh, D'après nos sources, so yeah, the biggest rat in Quebec right now is was groomed by Gregory Woolley. Can't make this shit up, guys. And he sent someone to go kill him in front of his kids inside of that hotel. That's you see, that's that tells you everything you need to know. Very disgusting. So his children had to watch that. Gregory, what would you like if someone did that to your family, huh? People that you love, in front of them, they do that. Come on, man. Have a little bit of uh, decency, you know? That's how uh, that's how you operate now? Really, man? You're no man of honor, I can tell you that. That's not honorable whatsoever. That's pretty damn low and disgusting. On top of being a slave to, to really white supremacists, they won't even let you join their club, bro. Kids don't join him. Young men, young kids... Blue Crips, whatever. Don't join him. Don't do it. Save yourself. And if for any, if for any of you guys go back to school, go get an education or something. Anything but that, my friend. We really care about you here. Those guys don't give a rat's ass about you. That's why Silva is now also a, a very high level informant. Ask him if they care give a rat's ass about him. Let's keep going. Look at this. So, it was a death inside of the hotel lobby in Laval in May. Durant une fête familiale. A family birthday. Mais n'écartons pas trop vite. Let's not toss Andrew Sopas, uh, Scopa aside too fast. Who knows a lot of people. And has resources. As we know, he was at least maybe worth... Uh, take it for what it's worth. They said he was worth $30 million. We can at least know he's worth a couple of millions. That's for a guarantee. That's for sure. And uh, when he says resources, remember his network in the video, what we learned is that his network is principally Greeks and Lebanese people. Les, trava les travailleurs autonomes. Bien établi dans l'arrondissement La Salle. Very well established in the southwest sector. Now, you guys should know what the southwest is. Everyone, I always drill it in your head. I try to create like a sort of... Uh, 
uh, a movie in your head. That's why when we did those episodes, I tried to make it like a movie. I tried to create an ambience for you for the Southwest. I tried to do to make it memorable. You know, it's not just words. If you listen to Saga of the 1%, you should be completely in. You know, when I say La Salle Southwest, you should have bells ringing inside of your heart. You should feel like you're there. If you don't, if you have no idea what this is, it's all Chinese to you. As a Canadian, go check it out, my friend. Check out Saga of the 1% Season 1. You're going to have a blast. So, Pietro D'Adamo, safe to assume he's Italian, was considered by the police, coming Italian Canadian, forgive me. He was considered as a rising star in organized crime in Montreal. In 2009, he was condemned for more than six years in the penitentiary for having plotted the importation of 1,300 kilograms of cocaine and for having imported 300 kilograms of this drug, it says. Okay, so if one of them was to plot to bring it in, so he couldn't, he couldn't, he didn't have time, I guess they arrested him. The other one was, they actually caught him for this. So they, they have the drugs in their hand, they have it, they know it was his, etc. They have enough evidence. D'Adamo serait très proche des membres de plus, les plus influents of the Irish. So you know it's the Westies, he was close to the Westies, Southwest. Does that make sense? Before, it was called, they say, the West End Gang. We're just going to call them the Westies, guys. You know, just for brand recognition. They were, you know. We're not pulling out of that. It's the West Island. Uh, no, West. Sorry about that. It was the Southwest. We know about Point St. Charles. People who don't know, shout out to Point St. Charles. That's where, that, that, that's the areas that I grew up. And believe me, there's a lot of, of uh, high-level criminals there. Man. Back in the days, I won't tell you anything, but I used to go in the basements and see... Man, big feet in basements, bro. Like big fields of of THC. Thankfully, I saw some THCs growing there, but guys, you couldn't fathom. I mean, grow ups back in the days, man. Le trèfle meurtri, and it was definitely related to the Irish, 100%. Le trèfle meurtri, le crime organisé traditionnel irlandais de Montréal a connu sa part des problèmes des dernières années. So the the, 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 you guys, in English, the truffle? The truffle? So the organized crime of the Irish in Montreal had known its share of problems in the recent years. Certains de ses chefs de l'époque du gang, certain of its leaders of the era of the Westies have died of natural means, like Jerry Mattix et les frères Laramé, the brothers, the Laramé brothers that the police considered like eventual succe uh, successors who were assassinated in 2013. Another successor, a potential, Sh Shane Kenneth Maloney, was condemned, we know that one. By the way, Kane Kenneth Maloney is in a wheelchair. Let that sink in. And he's the literal son of, uh, the, that name again, the name's not coming to me. You guys know what I'm talking about. The, the guy that we all, uh, the, the king of cocaine. Sag of the 1%. I mentioned him. The king of cocaine. That's literally his son, guys. And he's literally friends with Rabbi Al-Khalil. They literally tried together to, to patch things while the Hells Angels were arrested and they could not traffic coke. These guys said, look, man, we got... We're just as big in the in British Columbia. Let us bring it here. And they needed someone from Montreal, of course. So Shane, Shane Kenneth Maloney said, maybe I can work something for you guys. Well, it didn't work out. The police in Quebec, they said, they, like the French Canadian model, they said, no, 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 no. You're not coming from outside to come and take over nothing, man. We got enough problems here, and I agree, we got enough problems. So in 2012, uh, if that's the one, the other video you can watch. If you don't know what the hell this is about, you want to find out, we have another video on our channel. It's called, uh, but the, the thumbnail, I forgot the name, but the thumbnail says, when they cooperate together something like that and you see a picture of a of a hell's angels with uh, larry amero independent soldiers check as one of the ones that has the highest views it's when i could not i did not have a good computer for video editing check that one out man the information's still there it's still good quoique affaibli il serait toujours présent dans le sud-ouest de l'île de montréal so see they're still present in the southwest of montreal although not as strong as before it says apparently and controlled, control, control, are controlling certain criminal activities in the port. So decades and decades and decades, it still hasn't changed, huh? 
uh, it says the there's investigations by the SPVM, which is the Montreal Police, and the SQ, the RCMP, showed a promiscuity with the mafia and the bikers. Le courtier, the, the broker. This one's interesting. Le chef de gang, Arsène Mompoint. You saw that one. I briefly mentioned him. A red fella. Was described by the police like a broker, an independent one. That filled his all kinds of contracts for all kinds of different criminal groups. There's a picture of him with none other than Salvatore Scopa. Note, Salvatore Scorpa was pushing heroin. Put that on the side. Les choses ont toutefois tourné. Things have unfortunately turned sour. For him, for the person we called BM, he was victim of an attempted murder in August. Remember articles in 2019. So it's maybe saying 2019 of August, they tried to kill him. And then he was arrested. So they shot at him, in other words. And then he was arrested by the SPVM in a, for participating in a network of trafficking. Trafficking what, guys? Heroin. May I remind you now, this is after this article, a year or two later, he gets killed. Isn't that funny? He dies along the same time as Andrew Scopa. You do the math, my friend. He's trafficking whose heroin, do you think? An old friend of mine who I had no clue, obviously. <laughs> I didn't know he was doing this. I don't like heroin. I don't, I just, it disgusted me, you know. He died as well. I learned that and it broke my heart. Who do you think had something to do with this? Huh? Use your math and logic. Au moment d'écrire ces lignes, at the time of writing these, mon point était toujours détenu. So, he, at the time of writing this article, he was detained. He's dead, my friend. Inclassable. Unclassable, it says. Perhaps they are classable today, four years later. But at the time, even these journalists were perplexed. And it says, on the road to extinction, the cell of the Calabrians lost two of its most important leaders. Giuseppe De Di Malo, Joe's Di Malo, the beau-frère, uh, is it called stepbrother? When your, your sister marries and then you become brothers with the guy, exactly that. Beau-frère de Renal Desjardins. Note, Renal Desjardins would never be a mob boss if it wasn't for this man. And this man would have a very hard time operating, uh, you know, in Quebec. You need a French-Canadian to do your, your stuff makes it a lot easier you can get in you can get hired i'm telling you the truth guys it's, it's a very sad truth it might change in the future it wasn't like this especially not in their era don't be surprised he needed it wasn't like desjardins needed him he needed desjardins just as much but they were married you married i think desjardins, uh, giuseppe married his sister and then event he groomed him desjardins got got power and now one day, well, you know what happened. The rest, Gi Giuseppe Di Malo was killed. He was shot for betraying the Rizzuto clan, obviously. And these three come in packages. Moreno Gallo. See? Assassinated in 2012 and 2013. For having, for having lacked loyalty to the Rizzuto clan. Remember this, because one day I want to talk about this again. Remember that. Maybe not ordered a kill, but knew about it, knew it was coming. And remember I told you, usually you go see other leaders. You don't want to make too many enemies if you want to kill someone. And the leaders tell you, yeah, sure, go ahead. Or or they they, they like tacitly approve it because they didn't warrant Vito Rizzuto. You see? And that's why they were killed. But the question is, I believe in my heart, I think that they were willing. Because Giuseppe Di Malo was was the underling of uh, uh, Via, not Violi, uh, what's his name again? Uh, Cotroni in the era. It used to be the Calabrians in Montreal that ran it. And then there was a coup. I call it a coup. There was a coup. In that coup, he was permitted to live. You have to understand this. He was permitted to live. He, I don't know if he was involved. He was probably, he was permitted to live. They had to fall in line. I don't know about you, but that's not a very... 
loving way. You know what I'm saying? There had to be some animosity there, man. You know? People don't forget what you did to them. And then when the tides turned, you can't expect these three to come help you out. But they were doing business with Rizzuto or for Rizzuto for the longest time. They were maybe waiting, waiting, and waiting. And this man had the biggest balls, and he did it. He actually went through with it. Here. Oh, look, he talks about it. Depuis le rayonnement de cette cellule-ci, since the wiping out of this cell that constitutes ancient members of the Catroni clan, allied to the Rizzuto's, uh, rallied to the Rizzuto's after he came to power in the beginning of the 80s. On entend de moins en moins parler des membres de ce groupe. We hear less and less of this group, of which certain people had taken the retirement or sold their legitimate business to other clan members. Les derniers, no, it's of the clan that, not other clan members, of another clan. I assume that if your properties are getting burned left and right, remember, tons of these properties are probably owned by these guys or businesses. You'd say, you know what, if I sell them, I get my money back, and now it doesn't matter what you do. Is that what's going on? I'll let you decide. Les derniers membres de cette cellule seraient protégés par un membre des Hells Angels de Montréal, Salvatore Brunetti. So, look at this. These last members of these cells are protected by Salvatore Brunetti. Remember, Salvatore Brunetti is, in terms of age and biker experience, he's probably one of the most oldest, most experienced bikers. He's before the Hells Angels, guys. You have to understand this. So, did he rub shoulders with those guys? In those days, and he's formed really deep friendships. To get his coke, let you decide. Le miraculé, the, the, I guess the miracled one, Antonio Pietrantonio, sorry about that, Antonio Pietrantonio, surnommé Tony Suzuki, that's hilarious, en raison de concession <laughs> automobile qu'il a déjà possédé. So he owned a, uh, concession, uh, automobile concession. I forget the name. Uh, dealership. Sorry about that. And he miraculously survived a spectacular hit in 2011, when the then the the Jardin clan, Montagna and Rizzuto, were implied in a in a three-way war. I guess it says. Autrement, bien en vue au sein du clan sicilien, Piet Pietrantonio had known difficult years. Toutefois, sa présence en décembre aurait le dernier hommage à Sobe. However, his presence at a wedding last December for Martin Robert, of which he's very close, shows that he found a protector, according to our sources. So you eventually become someone's cuck to survive. See what I'm saying? Is that what Grigley's been doing? He seems to be awfully attached to Italians right now. When he used to be awfully attached to bikers. Is that a survival mechanism? It's sort of like a Stockholm Syndrome, if you ask me. Le Voyageur de la 401. Alors que le nom Gian Pietro Tiberio retentissait dans de grandes enquêtes et que la police... So, when the name... When the name of Gian Pietro Tiberio was coming out in big investigations, his name kept coming back. The police considered, suddenly decided to consider him like an actor in the mafia. Or they said, okay, he's really important. Rather that, they started to consider him a really important actor. And he says that they, it, he barely hit the radar as an important actor a year ago. So probably 2000, 2019, so 2018. And he says that we've been hearing less and less talk about him, though. Tiberio tried to enter. Which business does the mafia try to enter in, usually? What are the commerce sectors? The, the, I forgot the name. It's when you uh, repossess vehicles. You know when you go and you, you, you parked in the wrong towing, towing company? Yeah, towing, my friend. So he tried to enter the towing business. I'm assuming he tried to intimidate other people. The usual... But he says that 
Although he tried, nothing shows recently that it's still the case. Even if we do see him in Montreal and Quebec, and the man would often be in Ontario, when he had made links with other influential Hells Angels. Other cells. The Montreal Mafia also has other smaller criminal cells that we hear less about. Notably, the Agostino Albanese clan. Again, I'm assuming Agost Agostino and Albanese, two different people, two leaders in the same group. Uh, and probably uh, Italian, Canadian. And it says that of which members of this group were uh, investigated for contraband tobacco. According to our information, il aurait versé un, he would have gave a tax. Look at this, my friend. Look at, pay attention to this. According to our information, he would have paid pizza to the Violi clan in Ontario, of which he was very loyal at the time of the domination of the Calabrians in Montreal. Another family is the one of Annunziata, of which the sons were very close to Liborio Contrera, and of the Hells Angels, Salvatore Cazetta. Again, the Contrera family, big cocaine middleman, if you will, or they help bring it from uh, Venezuela. They have families, they have ties there, etc., etc. And lastly, we have the man himself in 2015, Leonardo Rizzuto. Thank you so much. I hope you found this article informative. It was very, very big, but we covered many, 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 many names. And here in this chart, you can see some of those many, many names that, uh, that were named right here. Hope you enjoyed this one. I enjoyed making this. Thank you. See you next time, my friend. Oh, and if you want to help us out, subscribe. If you want to support this channel, subscribe now. And do like all our videos. It's a war against YouTube censorship, the new dictatorship, or we shall all become cucks to a bigger evil. And we need you to give Canadians and Americans the latest on the Canadian mob wars.